you've ever been underwhelmed with your performance of your shotgun in Call of Duty, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is out of control. Get in there. Find out what is the most important place on YouTube. Guys, the biggest support of the channel right now is Brownells. Brownells is bringing back ancient weapons from the past to haunt us because they can. They're an awesome resource. Go check them out. A big thank you to Brownells for sponsoring this video. Of course, we have other sponsors. We have Acre Gold and of course, the Sonoran Desert Institute. Definitely go check them out. If you are looking to get into gunsmithing, that type of stuff, they have some great resources. So ladies and gentlemen, I haven't forgotten about, but most certainly not by me, Zero Buckshot. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Shotguns, are they deadly? Are they effective? Where do shotguns fall? Because I know from Call of Duty that my shotguns suck. I can't kill anything. And despite my proclivity to not wanting to listen to what politicians tell me, I had a question. I kind of wanted a 12 gauge shotgun. So we went ahead and got one and we decided to do some scientific testing to see how they perform. So today we're gonna be running a Benelli M4 now, to be clear, what's really cool about shotguns is that when it comes to 12 gauge, yes, the Benelli M4 is cool. It is a semi-automatic shotgun and it rocks and it's, it's awesome. But the fact of the matter is, is depending on barrel length, you're gonna get about the same or perhaps even better performance. So even having your dad's old pump shotgun with a 20 inch barrel, you're probably gonna get slightly better results compared to the Benelli M4. So don't feel discouraged if you're watching the results of this video. Any old 12 gauge is gonna perform just about the same. That is a cool thing about 12 gauge shotguns. So getting into it, the question is, what is normal? There are of course other gauges, but today we're gonna to be talking about 12 gauge because for my entire childhood, I've watched bad guys get blown away by 12 gauge shotguns. I've watched shotguns be awesome. I watched the Terminator use them and I figured that's what we're gonna do the video about. Now, when it comes to shotguns, we have a couple of different types of loadings or of course exotic shells. You have the dragon's breath and all that kind of stuff. But when it really comes down to it, most people are primarily using two types of ammunition for home defense. We have slugs and buck. Now when it comes down to it, we have different shell lengths. So to start off with, we of course have our pretty common. We have a two and three fourths inch shell right here. And those are pretty much what you see for the most part. And those are pretty good for any of your man stopping type things. We of course, also have three inch, a little bit more powder or a larger loading, <laughs> either or. And it should be noted that three inch is a magnum. Remember that for you guys out there. And in any case, the three inch are typically for a larger game, that type of thing. And it is a little bit more power than might be necessary, but we certainly do, ha do have them and it is America, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. And that is the nice thing about being able to own those three inch shells. But in any case, if we take a look at it right here, the question is, what is the difference between slug and buck? Well, right here, we have Hornady Critical Defense. There are some really good shotgun loadings out there, but in general, if you're gonna be using a shotgun for a self-defense load, um, Hornady, or especially Federal, I'd say Federal's perhaps a little bit better with their double up buck loads and their um, flight control wads are gonna be pretty good. So when it comes to a shotgun, what we have, of course, is we have the primer, we have the powder to, of course, ignite, and then we have this nice little wad right here. So the wad, especially on these really nice types of loadings right here, the wad's gonna help control it and keep that pattern a little bit tighter. Now these right here are double lot buck. Now there are a couple different types of buck out there. You have triple lot buck, you have zero buck, just single digit buck, uh, you have number four, number one buck. Um, there's a lot of questions about which buck is the best. So a lot of people uh, prefer to use number four or number one because there's less penetration because you should understand that uh, Good old double lot does have quite a bit of penetration, so depending if you're living in an apartment or something like that, that might be a concern for you. But in any case, most law enforcement agencies, most militaries use double lot buck. So you see these nice .33 diameter little uh, balls right here, and they're each about 60 ounces or so. And typically you have between eight and nine. Now a quick note, I would definitely recommend the eight, and that's kind of what's typical because with the nine, you typically get a flyer, which is one of the pellets that tends to behave a little bit erratically. A quick note too, a lot of people have, are used to shooting like bird shot through their shotguns and they know that the tighter the choke, the tighter the pattern. That's not so much the case with buck. You see, if you try to choke down buck, what's gonna happen are these little balls are gonna end up running into each other and deforming and they're not, they're not gonna pattern as nicely. So in general, with your military type shotguns and that type of thing where you just have the cylindrical bore, totally fine. Don't try to choke these things down. That's not what you need to do with a buck shot. Now, Going from buckshot, which is a very devastating, we also have slugs. 
So right here, we have a Federal light Rifled Slug. We also have a couple Brennecke Slugs right here, like the big, day, big game type slugs for taking down uh, brown bear and that type of thing. But with a slug, you simply have one ounce of lead. <laughs> it's a little bit crazy. Uh, probably not the best for home defense because uh, that is a lot of penetrative power uh, that's gonna be just crushing through drywall and that type of thing. So definitely more of a hunting round or a type of round where if you need to extend the range in your shotgun. But in any case, there are different loadings out there and those are our two main ones. Now, another thing should be noted, that today we're also gonna be shooting these really cool ballistic gel dummies. Uh, they have bones, they have organ in them, and we're gonna see what it feels like, <laughs> and we're gonna see what it's like when we shoot these and how they perform and what happens. We have no idea, we've actually never shot these dummies before, they're used by the United States military for uh, human analog testing. It should be noted as well that these ballistic dummies were, uh, they're farm raised, uh, they were killed humanely, so there's gonna be no issues when it comes to that. So. One thing that I've always wondered about and that I've, you know, as a kid, I think I definitely misunderstood is how effective are they? You know, at what range do I really start opening up and do I no longer have an effective kind of engagement distance when it comes to my shotguns? So what we're going to look at here is I have a couple different paper targets and we're going to shoot with these Hornady critical defense loads and we're going to see how much the pattern opens up from 7 to 10 to 20 to 25 and we'll take a couple shots at 82 just to show you some things. We'll also fire a couple slugs through this guy but uh without further ado let's check it out. Okay let's go ahead and let's group these out. So we're going to take all of our shots right now just get that taken care of and uh see how we're going there. All right starting at about seven right here. All right, let's go check out. Okay, so at seven right here, if we wanna come take a closer look. So right here, we have the wad, right? Remember that that wad's gonna be there, so that's not the actual pattern. The actual pattern we have right here. So very tight at seven with that Hornady critical defense. We have one flyer there, um, very much so under a handprint. We're looking at about a two inch uh, grouping right there. And a lot of people think with a shotgun that you want as big of a pattern as possible. Not so much, you wanna be accountable for your rounds. The thing that makes a shotgun so devastating isn't the fact that it spreads out. What makes it so devastating is you're getting hit by freaking eight to nine pellets of 60 grains of going approximately 1650 feet per second. That is devastating, it's faster than a nine mil. All right. We're at 10 right here. Very good grouping right there. Awesome, still under a handprint. We're looking at about five inches across. Uh, that is looking good right there. All right. Let's check out at approximately 20. So 20, uh, pattern's starting to open up a little bit, but still all within the man size target right there. Same thing in about 21. Really respectable pattern when it comes to a shotgun. Finally, we have out here at about our max distance of 25 on this little range right here. And we have a good grouping. Again, everything's on paper. That's what we wanna see. So the point is, is that we're getting pretty good, decent human-sized hits uh, with, the, with these loadings right here. So it definitely does depend on the type of buckshot that you use. If you're buying cheap buckshot, you're gonna get a much wider pattern, so you should understand that. But with this Hornady Critical Defense or with your Federal, that stuff, it kinda fucks. All right, let's try it at 80. Let's shoot it some steel, we'll see what happens. Like to use birdshot or something like that for home defense. And the thing is, is that if you're not getting penetration, penetration matters. You gotta get deep in there, otherwise it doesn't matter. Okay, we're gonna take some shots at some reduced sized Ipsic steel. So it's about C-zone only, and uh, we're at about 80 yards right now. Let's go ahead and let's check it out. All right, so a couple notes there, right? At 80, we're not getting full, every pellet's not gonna hit, but the point is, is we are getting impacts at 80 with a shotgun firing buck. So it's going to depend on your loading, but still very effective. You can definitely still 
put somebody onto the ground with that. Pretty cool. All right, we got one slug right here. We'll go ahead and take a shot. <laughs> that would definitely kill. That would hurt. Holy shit, slugs are crazy. Did you hear that going down range? <laughs> so, for science, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot this ballistic dummy. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna start with our good old Hornady critical defense, two and three fourths inch load. Um, I'm really, really interested. Now, we have three different dummies. Um, a big thank you to ballistic dummies for sending these out. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and center punch this guy and just see what happens. All right, we're doing this. For the first time ever on Grantham, we have double up buck versus a ballistic dummy. All right, we're gonna center punch this guy. Micah, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's talk about this. So, initial impact, uh, tight group first off, because we, of course, have the uh, Hornady critical defense there, and we definitely got into the heart there. Let's see if we punched out through the rear. Okay, it looks like we, yeah, it looks like we got a, oh, there they are. Oh, you see them? Yeah. Here, I'm going to set it down. Oh, that is interesting. Here, take a look, guys. So, it looks like I can see some of these pellets right there. Yeah, you can see how they deformed. Oh, and so it looks like it took some of the bone out through the back of the spine right there. And when they impacted the bone, looks like we have, it's like one, two of the pellets right here that got through. There's a third one right there. So it looks like they just about got through. So that seemed to be a pretty good loading as far as the amount of power where it, didn't, it dumped all that energy right in. That was really interesting. I actually wasn't sure precisely what was gonna happen, but oh God, here, come look at the front. So we definitely obliterated the heart. You can see the internal bleeding there through the lungs. Um, oh, gross, blood right there. Anyhow, so what we're gonna do now is clearly what we have to do. We're gonna shoot it again. I'm gonna gut shot this guy. We're gonna see what happens. Ready, Micah? On you. Yo. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. <laughs> Come here, take a look at this. Holy shit, dude. Okay. <laughs> so, with that first shot through the torso, of course, have a lot of organ, and a lot of bone, and a lot of stuff to go through. Um, doing the gut shot, uh, we had a lot less resistance. And so, I'm not a doctor, but I mean, I did quit med school once, so that makes me pretty damn close in New Jersey. And uh, it would look like, due to the lack of resistance that uh, we got quite a bit deeper and we also obliterated the spine so that guy is not going to be dead immediately but uh at the very least that guy is paralyzed right off the bat and that's definitely going to be a lot of cardiovascular damage i'm i'm pretty sure that this guy's gonna die would you agree micah oh, he dead. yeah i think I, I think he's dead that is nasty that is crazy these ballistic dummies are so fucking cool. Let's shoot the lung. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to shoot this guy in the left lung. We haven't really hit that yet. So we're going to go ahead and do more of the Hornady critical defense. We're going to try that out. Mikey, you ready? Okay, on you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, 
no. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Okay, that's, yep, so this is really cool actually. That is really cool. So you can see right here on the back, you can actually, if you get a little close, you can see the actual wound tracks. That is disgusting to you. You can see the actual wound tracks from the pellets right here as they are coming out. So it looks like we had about four that made it completely through and just about dumped out. That is really, really interesting. So yeah, so when we're, this is no news for anybody who's been military, military trained, police trained, or done any about a bit of research on gunfighting and stuff, but when you're shooting up towards the thoracic cavity, you know, the general standard when it comes to projectiles and their ability to penetrate is that they have to do that 12 inches of ballistic gelatin. And of course, the 12 inches of ballistic gelatin isn't specifically meaning 12 inches of human tissue. But you can see why that's important is because when you do impact areas that are critical to a human body, that you have a lot of things right around there that are going to be able to defend it, such as the bones and the organs are going to provide resistance. So having that ability to get completely through and get deep enough is going to be important. Um, I think the only way to finish this guy off is to do like four rounds of rapid fire into his chest and to see what happens, right? I wouldn't imagine it any other way. Any other way. Yeah, I agree. After that, it's going to be some magnum slugs. Let's check it out. So we're going to go ahead and rapid dump in about five rounds because what makes a shotgun cool is that compared to like a pistol or a rifle, each trigger pull is sending eight to nine projectiles into a target, unless you're using a slug. And it's just pretty devastating. So, you know, by firing five projectiles, I am a, uh, I'm putting quite a bit of lead, approximately 480 ounces per trigger pull into a body. And for my guys who shoot 45, 70, it's not that big of a deal, but that's pretty devastating. So we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna finish off with five rounds into the chest right here. Micah, tell me, let me know when you're ready. On you. Okay, here we go. Man, it's wild shit right there. So this one is, was already dead, but he's very dead now. So let's go ahead, we're gonna put up a new one and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put some slugs through it. Oh. Me and Micah, my camera guy, are having a discussion. We're gonna be firing the three inch Magnum slugs through this guy at this point. And the discussion was, is what is going to happen? So my, what I think is going to happen is I think that these are going to have too much power. And I think we're going to see a lot of over penetration and I think it's going to go up, go through without delivering as much destruction as you'd think from a slug. Now, after that, we're going to try to a federal rifled slug, which is a little bit slower. And I think that will do a little bit better. Michael, what do you think is going to happen with this? Dude, I think it's going to stop and we're just going to see bones sticking out. Like carnage. I can't wait to Maybe find out. Maybe from this close. You might be right. But I don't know. That's a question. We could yeah. step back. We'll, we'll do one close. We'll do one far. I can't wait to find out what happens. As always on Grand Thumb, science is what rules this channel. First shot, center punch on the chest. Mike, you ready? Set it. Oh, oh my God. Okay, science must rule. Uh, let's, uh. Dude, we. <laughs> dude, we broke the stain. Did we? Yeah, we broke the stain. Yeah, we did. Okay. Hold on. Do you think it went through? Uh, yes. Hold on. Do you think I can do CPR on this guy? Bring him back. Ah. <sighs> Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. That yeah. Broke the stand. That sliced right through. <laughs> that is the uh, slug impact right there, and uh, yeah. So that this was right at the back. So it looks like looks like when it came out the back, it impacted right here, and then 
appears to have likely deflected or deformed at that point to where it's gone. Uh, this was a previous shot from uh, one of the buck shots from Hornady, um, but the location of the slug is unknown. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, it probably traveled back through, backwards through time. That's like the, uh, the flames off the Back to the Future car when it you know, goes back through time. That's what it left behind right there. Incredible, we found it. So this is a slug right here. Um, mostly intact. You can see some points where it scraped along bone and stuff, but um, that came through as a solid chunk. That definitely did not dissipate. It just traveled straight through. Pretty incredible right there. Next up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a gut shot on this guy. So we're still going to use that three inch magnum. And uh, I think that this is going to be devastating. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do this. Mike, are you ready? I'm on you, man. Did we just break the stand again? Well, yeah, there's a splinter of the stand right there. You know, we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> like, there's... Yeah, we actually blew the stand apart. Okay. See? Not as much as I thought it would be. Nice little clean exit wound. Uh, compare that to what we saw with the buckshot. Um, like I said, this thing just has a lot of power, but that did obliterate the spine. You can see, even though it wasn't dead on, it still shattered and looks like it completely cut through it on the side right there. So let's go ahead and let's cut that open. Let's take a look at that. And if somebody asks, I know somebody will, this is a Microtech Halo. These are great knives. Yeah, oh, Jesus. So you can see right there, it's just a channel going through about the size of that slug. So that was pretty damn devastating. The question is, how do we finish this off? Do we just put like three rounds of magnum through the sky at once? So my camera guy actually had a good thought and that thought was instead of shooting it with uh, one of the slower rifled slugs, rather, what if we use the buck and we tested this at distance and saw what kind of penetration we're getting with the buck shot um, a little bit further, maybe 15 or so. So of course the engagement distance with your shotgun is going to depend on either how big your house is or your land is and that type of stuff. But in any case, I think it's going to be an interesting um, little perspective here. So let's get into it. So guys, we're at about 25 right here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, see how it performs. I'm actually not sure. Let's go ahead and do it. Mike, are you ready? Check it out. Was it a hit marker? Oh, yeah. Call of Duty, I heard it. Oh, boy. Oh. Huh. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do some science on this bitch right here. So, nice. So, interesting. So, my, my grouping was a little bit to the right there but we still got good pellet hits right here, even at 25. So we have a hit right there. You can see it impacted and punctured the lung. The lung's bleeding. That's where we see the uh, blood coming through. Let's see if it squeezes up through there. Oh. Oh, frothy. Yeah, sick. Okay, so we have one that impacted the lung. This one was dead on the money and went straight into the heart and it cracked the sternum and went through. This one right here went through a rib and then still punctured the lung and looks like it really shredded it there. Looks like we have two rounds right here that entered at the lower lung. And if you come around to the side, you can see their wound tracks going down. And then off to the side, we had a kind of a partial hit right there that traveled through, exited, and then hit under the armpit. And then looks like another round that uh, just kind of missed and would have hit the arm if the arm was up right there. So we have right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits at about 25. Looks like my zero is a little bit off or I'm just a terrible shot, one or the other. Is he dead? I, I think he's gonna be bleeding out at the very least. I think the, the hit through his heart right there is probably death. Before I cut into him, I wanna go ahead and check the back. Let's go ahead and let's take a look here, see if we have any exit wounds. Nope. So I'm looking for any type of Indication looks like we had a small fragment right there that went straight through and came out through the back of the lungs. 
uh, that lower shot that that got through that rib and then looks like this shot went completely through as well fragments that came through that was interesting all right let's cut into the heart right here let's see how far he got in okay this does feel like surgery or not surgery an autopsy it's, this would definitely be an autopsy okay let's check him out yeah that if you take a look right here so that shot went through and completely crushed the sternum right there and then entered the heart yeah that's a that's a kill shot even at 25. are you telling me call of duty bullshit yeah that is a one hit kill right there that's call of duty's bullshit <sighs> So, obviously our dummy is shot at this point, and so it'll be a little bit harder to figure some stuff out, but what we wanna do right now is take a shot with a slug at about, let's say 50. I wanna see what happens, how much energy we're losing, and kind of what transfer we're getting into the, uh, into the human dummy. Do you think that'll be interesting? Yeah. yeah, I think it will as well. All right, let's do it. Um, what we're gonna do right now is we're at about 50 on the, uh, on the dummy and we're gonna see uh you know what the uh slug does so we're gonna check that out and uh see what happens i i have no idea is that the hit right there dude i'm pretty sure that bone wasn't sticking out oh shit you oh oh it, dude. oh shit i did where the fuck did that slug go oh <gasps> Oh, you feel it? I don't know. Hold on. This is... What the fuck? This is a great mystery right now. There's some pellets. Nah, just... Looks like piece of the spine. Still look through this. That is craziness. Well, I'm not gonna spend forever just digging for this guy, but suffice to say that uh, that slug was definitely effective. <sighs> I feel like this guy could take another shot, don't you? Yeah. Like he's got some. He's little, fine. He's fine. He's got some more life in him. So pretty much at no point with any of these shotgun rounds have there, has there ever been like a point in time where we were like, no, that didn't kill. Like every one of these shots has been like, yo, he dead. All right, let's go ahead and finish this guy off. I'm gonna fire a few rounds here. Holy shit, like there's birds all over. Yo, are they trying to eat the body? Oh my God, dude. Are they trying to eat the body? Dude, they just were on your legs. Huh. Weird, I'm the, like a Disney princess, pretty much. I mean, we already know. <laughs> okay, let's go see if these go through car doors. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot through this car door and see how good both buckshot and how good our slugs penetrate. And uh, right behind it, we have this paper target. So not a, uh, a ballistic dummy, but rather we're just gonna see if uh, we have rounds actually penetrating through. So let's check it out. Okay, on you. Yo, Miami-Dade Police Department has entered the chat. <laughs> What's up? Dang. Huh. Really? No way. Hold on, come, come look at the back here. I thought, I thought for sure. Dude, 100% you hit like the window motor or shoot. Shoot more to the left. Let's do no, more. no, listen, listen. Cherokees are tough, bro. 
If you want to survive a gunfight, get a Cherokee, apparently. Holy sh... I, dude, I never in a thousand years thought that was dead on. That was pretty dead on. I, I don't actually don't know what's up. Cherokee magic, dude. I mean, being a mechanic, legitimately, I don't know what fucking stopped that. Let's try it again. Okay, shoot. It's gotta. It's, it had to have gone through. You know? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it did, but like... Wait. Not as much as you'd yeah. think. Like we got some shrapnel. Okay, we we did get here. Come take a look at the back. Yeah, I'm wondering if. So we got a couple that went through, but like, really, it wasn't as much as I thought it would be. Do you think a slug would do better? Oh, absolutely. Well. In and out. Well, you know, Paul Harrell did a video on this, and like, it smoked right through. So it. I mean, obviously, it depends on the type of car and stuff, but it's interesting, you know? This car looks like a scene from The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. I'm going to try to shoot it at a place I haven't shot before. You ready? Yep. Yeah, he gone. I heard it. Yo, look at the size of that thing. Yeah, it deformed heavily, but it came through and smoked through them right there. Or perhaps there, it's hard to say. But you can see where it exited right there. Oh, I mean, yeah. there, there's certainly a hole. But you know, this is kind of a tough car door, dude. This is actually kind of surprising. This is the opposite of what I expected. <laughs> I mean, like, real talk to the viewers, like, I thought this thing was going to smoke straight through. Everything that I've seen up to this point has stated that, I mean... It's gonna stop them. I mean, obviously, you get hit a couple times on here. It's gonna smoke right through. But you know, it it was more resistant than I thought it would be. And before anyone comments, that window has been fucking shot out. Yeah, that window has been shot. So should we try? No layer of glass. Sh should we try the other door? Yeah. All right, you ready? On you. Okay, yeah, so we had it exit pretty well out that one right there. But you know, like that is surprising to say the least um, on that other door. I must have hit like a gear mechanism or... That's what I'm guessing. You know, science is dead, dude. So I hope you liked the video today on shooting ballistic dummies and checking out patterning uh, with the shotgun. Obviously, with any of the shots that we made, pretty much all of them, I believe, would have been fatal. So the shotgun is an extremely effective weapon, but it's not the weapon for everything. It doesn't fit every niche. It doesn't fit every tactical situation, but in many, it is good. So, you know, if you're in an area where you're not able to own some of the uh, wonderful semi-automatic weapons that we have or pistols or what have you, and all you have is a shotgun, you should be confident in your shotgun. Um, it's going to be important that you shoot with the loadings that you're planning on defending yourself with or, or whatever you're going to be doing with that shotgun. And make sure that you know how it's patterning. It's going to come down to shooting, which sucks because I know ammo is scarce. But you should be doing that. And especially if you're running a semi-automatic weapon, you should ensure that that ammunition is going to reliably and consistently cycle your weapon. On some of the better ones, like the Benelli M4 right here and like the Beretta 1301, I believe that 1301 is correct, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are awesome shotguns, and uh, I've never seen any of those shotguns choke on, on really any ammo. They do a pretty good job, but on some of the cheaper ones, you might run into some issues, so just ensure that it cycles your weapon. But in any case, I think if you've seen anything, it's that shotguns are very effective weapons, and they are very awesome at what they do. Now, before we end, I just want to kind of show you guys a couple things on this shotgun, because I know people are going to ask on my general setup. So we have a Benelli M4 right here. On the shotgun card that we have right here, this is a shotgun card from STAC, and they do fit into the M4 mag pouches. They're pretty cool, and they peel off, so you can easily slap a new one in when you need it, and they just Velcro right onto the side. Um, pretty neat little feature. On the top, I have a Scalar Works mount for an Aimpoint T1, T2, and then uh, before I had an RMR, either will work. 
Over here, I have impact weapon system components right here. Um, that is both a mount for my sling as well as a light mount. That way I can simply, when I'm holding my weapon, do the push button on there and have a weapon light. There are of course multiple ways to set up a Benelli M4 way the Vickers, <laughs> help me Larry, uh, sling right here. And uh, that is the general sh setup of my Benelli M4. Nothing else has been changed and it's very effective. But again, any shotgun, long as you know what you're doing, long as it's built well, is going to be awesome. Mossberg 500s, Remington 870s are great shotguns. So the thing about it guys is like we talked about, Shotguns are awesome. They're extremely devastating. They work really well, but if you're not training with them, you're still going to suck with them. So make sure you get training. There are tons of different places to get training. Pat McNamara, Haley Strategic, probably my dad, Cogworks Bear Solutions. Definitely go check them out. These are guys who are willing to train you and have good real world experience and can get you to a level that's going to make you the weapon uh, to ensure that whatever tool that you're using uh, is going to be effective in your hands because the brain is the ultimate weapon you have. So make sure that you are training it. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys, and uh, I've got nothing else for you. Okay, final thing for you guys um, is what I've echoed a lot of times, which is going to be kindness. Um, there's a lot to be said uh, for being kind, as my hands are stained with that fake blood, to being kind and to responding to a situation with kindness. Um, I've never been happy with myself when I've responded to a situa situation with anger. I've always felt bad afterwards and I've had to make up for it. Uh, and so if there's anything I could say in my, in my short life experience so far, it's to uh, respond with kindness. Uh, I've never been angry with myself for being kind to somebody. Um, so that's kind of my, my advice to you for today. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Go out there and make the world a better place. Love you guys.